My name is Ben, and I served in the Gulf War in the United States Army with the 82nd Airborne as a tank unit. You know, it's, it's not like a Hollywood picture. It's now you, you, see, you know, people getting hurt there, you're seeing real blood. Now you're going, oh God, I hope I, I don't get hit. You're praying that you don't get hit. You have to be brave for your other troops because you got to back each other up. But when you see somebody fall down and get hurt by getting shot, that's when it, it all comes real. I still think about it from time to time too. I was still going through problems. I was seeing doctors in the military. I fell off a tank and I fractured my back, but then I, I made it out okay. It's just, uh, in, in, I came out in one piece, but my mind didn't come out in one piece. I was on uh, light duty, you know, because of, of my injuries. Uh, then I had to, get, had to retire in 98. When I got out of service, I came home and uh, it didn't seem, you know, the same, because you know, once you live a military life and then they go back home and uh, try to come back to civilian world, it was different. I was having nightmares, I couldn't sleep. I was up at night, all night, uh, pacing back and forth and uh, any noise, that any backfire or anything, I was jumpy. Uh, if I went out, I was always looking around. I was, I was really nervous and still scared to be, to be out in the street. My family is the one who took me. They, they said, there's something wrong with you and you need to see a doctor. And I, it took them a couple of weeks to get me there because I kept on saying, there's nothing wrong with me. I guess I got worse because my family couldn't take it no more. I went to a regular doctor appointment. I hear in a speaker my name being called. I'm like, why is my name being called? When I go to the room, there are two doctors there. They said, till you're ready to go, we're not releasing you. From there on, I was going to groups in the ward going to groups. I was ready after the fourth week because they let me go home. But within a, two weeks later, I ended up going back on myself, going back in on myself. I couldn't take it. I was feeling guilt and then I wanted to hurt myself. And at that time, I came, out, came back out and after two months. I stayed with my sister, which is, she lives up in the country area, which is more peaceful and quiet. So the doctor felt that was better for me to go away for a little while, go up to uh, enjoy a little country quietness. Because he felt that when I first got out, because of the noise and stuff, that brought up a trigger. I was constantly going to the doctor, it was like every two weeks, every two weeks, until I, they stabilized me. They also put me in a group where other guys who have uh, PTSD. So we all like tell each other our stories, we all get along, we under, understand each other. and. I have my counselor and I have my doctor, which constantly look after me. If you're afraid to talk to your lieutenant or go to the chaplain, because the chaplain will guide you the right way. The chaplains in the military, they keep everything to themselves. They'll guide you the right way for help. But I told them when you get out, don't be, don't keep it built inside. You got to go seek help. You can't stay home like, like I say, in the bunker. You, uh, you got to get out of that bunker. You got to seek help. You got to put that foot forward and, and try to keep going. And, and the VA does that for you. It took me a while and I got a lot of help and I'm getting better and better, you know, every day. You know, it worked for me and it probably can work for you. You know, just give it a try. 